political discussions, especially matters youth and leadership, don't end even during the break. They carry <laughs> on and they take different dimensions. We'll try and see if we can capture them uh, uh, during this sec next session. And unfortunately, our time is uh, almost up. Can so you believe I don't know how we're going to do this. Anthony, we haven't had your voice for a bit. Uh, Honorable Kater here has claimed that you have political ambitions yeah. and that you have your sights firmly set on a seat somewhere. We don't know. What we want to know from you is, if you do, what are some of the considerations that you would make? And when is the right time for a young person to begin thinking about taking leadership? We've been told out there 2022 is a long ways away, but it seems like for a young person, you have to start planning much earlier on. What factors do you need to take into consideration? What challenges would you expect if what Anna Bokater is saying is true about you? Um, I think I have leadership ambitions, though I'm in leadership as of now. I interact with politicians almost on a daily basis because of the nature of my work serving as the CEO of the Young Members of Parliament. And in this parliament, you're talking about 48 MPs who are in active politics. So every other day, I have an opportunity to you know, interact with uh, them out there. Um, I think what I aspire is not entirely just a question of what Anthony wants, but a question of what Kenya needs in this time and age. Because I feel like we have been you know, revolving around the same, same problems with the same thinking that caused that problem. You know, Albert Einstein pointed out that the significant problems you face cannot be solved with the same thinking that has caused the problem. And the thinking that has caused our problem today is the kind of a political culture that we continue to perpetuate in our actions, in our decisions as we go. I feel like uh, young people have an opportunity, a historic one that has presented itself by virtue of the challenges that we have. And uh, we don't need to start late, we need to start now. Starting now means you do what uh, uh, John Paul Mwirigi, or former MP Kinoti Gatobu did for his people. He didn't have money, he didn't have all this opulence that people talk about, but he went out to the community and told them, I will not come here with 200 shillings because 200 shillings will end in the next three days, but I will come with what I have gained from university. I've been trained and I am a graduate. How about I offer free tuition to your primary, uh, I mean, candidates for class eight and form four. And he went through that kind of a process. And that allowed the community to actually see there's distinguishing features that make him different from the rest. And I think that is the simplest way I can be able to describe leadership uh, within the political space. If us young people can begin to shape a new narrative that okays uh, the idea of service more than perpetuating the culture of money, because yeah. we are also falling victims. Look at the kind of uh, activities, economic activities most of us are engaging in today. You know, we, we want to really get that money fast. Then once you realize that I have so much accumulated for myself illegally, then you begin to think of, I need to get into political leadership to protect myself first of all, yeah. because when I'm in parliament, mm -hmm. I will probably enjoy the protection of just being within parliament, you cannot be arrested. Yeah. You no, know, that, that is the mentality that Kenya is shaping. Okay. And that is why you're seeing all these cases of corruption and whatnot. Yeah. But I feel like uh, I and uh, even those of us in this table, we present the kind of hope that this country needs. Yeah. And that is the hope that I think Mosh Mogheter is trying to push me towards. Okay. That we start <laughs> entertaining the thought of why don't we, you know, say these good words out yeah. there to the voters yeah. and maybe convince them because even going by the feedback from the report, Many young people are not as attracted to politics. Reason being, they're, they're not even sure they stand a chance. to buy or to vote? Both. 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 Yeah, because, you know, the motivation, even in Kibra, you'll see, mm. ultimately the motivation would be who pays the biggest amount of money. You know, who bribed or who gives most. Mm. It's not a question of the, the, the credentials the of leader. the candidate, yeah. the competence of uh, their arguments. Yeah. And, and that is where the nightmare is. We'll never get proper mm. leadership unless... Yeah. We insist and impose on ourselves yeah. the duty and the responsibility of ensuring that we shape the right culture. Nerima, and I, you, I am convinced yeah. that time is right for time us to right. do that which is right. Nerima, you've been traversing the country, counties, and I see your frustration most of the time with the leadership. Are you vying? If yes, <laughs> why? If not, <laughs> why not? <laughs> because then now there's I a know. People, people always ask me that. Uh, I'm not particularly vying, but I'm supporting a lot why, of young people. How do you want to bring the changes if you're huh? not vying? <laughs> what? How do you want to bring in those changes if you're not even I'm supporting young people who I believe have the potential to be great leaders. I am. 
Wait, 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 let her finish. You want to yeah. say something? On her behalf, yes. Let her finish. <laughs> no, I am supporting young people who I believe are great leaders and would make great leaders politically. I do think that what we lack in terms of young people is other people who invest in young people. Mm. And it, that's what I am working on and that's what I am building. So you don't want to take that mantle yourself? I don't think I would do as much as I'm doing outside. Mm. I'm doing so much more in many so. other counties. If I divide would be have one particular area, right now I can talk about 10 counties comfortably. But I don't know about 10 counties. No, we <laughs> want, <laughs> want, 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 want to go like yeah. this game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, for example, eh? <laughs> you know, as young people, we know who should go. Sometimes we feel who should be where and uh, what time. For example, let me just put, if I'm the president of this team, I will want him to be my colleague so that we can work together, maybe in policies or in parliament. I will want Rima to be in the executive. He's very good in policy, a good, has a good vision, can see what we, me and Tony might not see. So we will need her in the advisory and all other things. He's crafting him, a coalition. He's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's a lawyer he's and he understands already. how <laughs> We, we need to operate. And he's perfectly good for judiciary and AG. And maybe you guys will be in... in, in, in what in Mugazit? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, eh? Even <laughs> us young people, we know not all of us will want to come to political space. Some can focus on being advisors of this country. Some can continue doing the good job she's doing yeah. across the country. Because I would want her to come to my area and educate ma ma many young people. To go to, I would like to see her everywhere teaching. Because the major problem is education. Mm. We might go around money. We might go around bribery. We might go around anything. But if we don't focus on education in our country, and be able to to raise the bar yeah. for the, the the level of illiterates and the literates to be somewhere then we will have a big gap the illiterate will be doing their thing and then the the nairobi and the slum boys will be doing their thing and the majority will control but what happens when the majority is not educated mm. we'll have problems that's a question that you ask yeah. steve well i don't know how you'll capture how you'll compress mm -hmm. this one of the barriers in terms of access to political leadership for young people is just the money that plays against them. Fine. And yeah. you said that there are simple ways to go about this. Yeah. Uh, please explain. So here's the thing. Money and politics and the Election Campaign Finance Act, which was suspended, I think for the right reason, and I don't support that act because it's unimplementable as it were. But here's the thing. Money carries the twin potential of supporting candidate emergence. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how do I know you're running? If you're not spending money, you're not to reach me. But also money carries the possibility of altering public choice processes, which means over-investment in money in campaign can make someone change their view about a particular candidate. For instance, Mariga is incoherent. He doesn't have a settled... I don't think it's fair to say this. No, 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 freedom of viewpoint. No, no, no. First you begin by... No, hold on. Hold on. Freedom of viewpoint, Mr. Igomora, freedom of viewpoint, you must recognize that. That doesn't mean that I'm endorsing Imran Okoth. I don't. I mean, I don't vote in Kibra. The thing is... Freedom of viewpoint cannot infringe on some... No, no, no. Freedom of viewpoint means... Means that you observe and you comment. You get? He doesn't have a settled philosophy of what he wants. He's not a voter. He's not a voter. He's not a voter. He doesn't vote in Kibra. He's never voted in his life, but he wants to organize your government. You know, ideally, such a person is not fit to serve. But if he's inundating you with messages, a lot of campaign messages supported by finances, and a lot of money around his campaign finance, he can become attractive. Not just Mariga. The Mariga syndrome is widespread. In fact, even the elected leadership, even here in Nairobi, I think, let's, let, I mean, because I, because I mentioned him adversely, let me just extend for clarity. If you look at the present leadership, most of these people, they were able to ride on the support of their resources, financial resources to get elected. So I'm saying money carries the twin potential of supporting candidate emergence, but it can also be used to alter public choice processes. But how do you counter that? Because money manifests in terms of corruption, you know, bribery, and then these are the things that ultimately make you decide. You'd, you'd hear people saying, well, at least Tivogola has given me money. Narima has not. These are all thieves. I'd rather go with Tivogola. You get, without interrogating, you know, the ideological disposition, 
between Nerima and Steve Ogola, for instance. How do you deal with this problem? Now, world over, in established democracies, the problem of money or excessive money in election campaign mm -hmm. can be contextualized. Since all politics is local, look at Kibera. Uh, Kibera uh, constituency. You say, can I say this briefly, please? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. In less than a minute, you decampaign money <coughs> you in your local context. You say, listen, it can't be that the person who is going to represent us is over-investing, using a lot of money to reach the poor. That's why then it becomes attractive to campaign door to door. There have to be people de campaigning big money. The other way is to approach multinationals, for instance, to bring in big money to counter big money. You know, you have a lot of money pouring, maybe less in Kibra, to promote, uh, to, to promote civic education and awareness. If every day these are their messages around how money can be used to influence public choice processes, then people might say, yeah, I think I'm not empowered. So use big money to counter big money. You can decampaign big money by saying that our local context does not support this. Our leadership and the salaries you expect to earn and allowances do not support. And I said something, the last thing that, listen, Kenyans need to know that there's something called social accountability, social vetting. Okay. You have to ask. You have to decide okay. when, to, when you want to subject your leaders to social vetting. Okay, okay. How much are you worth? Yes. Where have you gotten this money from? And your final point? Disclose so that KRA can then follow up yeah. on your sources. Thank you. Thank you, Steve Ogola, for that. I was going to give my panelists each a round of uh, 30, 30 seconds, seconds, but my director is honestly not going to <laughs> agree to that. You know what? What feedback do we have? Can we put that up on the screen? And then if we have a final comment from any panelists, we can take that and, and we wrap up. This is, these are your thoughts. Uh, we start with uh, SMS uh, 2242. <laughs> says if we have to go well youth empowerment is a must mentorship in leadership is also vital by giving youth leadership positions in both county leadership and in the central government as well youth are the future and backbone of the nation they are the major workforce in development okay um we have another one here no name but you say the youth are struggling with lots of problems unemployment drugs substance influence cultural beliefs they should only go to politics if they have the wishes of the council of members for mm. example in mandera youth and women remain vulnerable all the time okay yeah, and we're now from a very urban nairobi centric yes. context but what's happening there are Out places there. where people, the, the old folk decide who will yeah. buy and who will not. You don't live a name or a, democracy. or a place where you're texting from, but you say parenting is the problem. The so-called young generations are bringing is wanting. You find a 25-year-old cannot make personal decisions and the boy child in trouble as girl child is too empowered. Nerima disagrees. <laughs> how, how did we get to that? I mean, okay. <laughs> All right. Another, uh, we have another SMS. Let's are we see what tweets you see. now? Okay, I've still an SMS here, no name, but you say youth are politically active. They can be a game changer if well mobilized towards common change. They lack, however, economic power, economic influence, and are key ingredients in modern-day democracy. Whenever these two coalesce, youth will always take over power. Again, the young leaders must be charismatic, energetic, innovative, and powerful enough to carry the hopes, the aspirations, and attract the admiration and trust from fellow youths. That is an Good SMS night. from Honorable Caliber Missy Sabot, actually, is okay. the one who sent that in and talking about how youth need to be empowered. I to say sounds like a campaign slogan, but... Uh, <laughs> right. It is for a politician, okay. Honorable Caliber <laughs> Missy from Sabot. <laughs> On Twitter, Engineer Lazaro says, lack of resources and problem of immaturity are some of the things that hinder youth from getting into elective positions. Okay, and uh, Shonko Andrew says the political sphere in Kenya does not give youth a chance to lead. There's a perception that has raised the leadership bar to a certain age cap. They ask, what can he or she tell us? Mm. Collins Owino says this conversation has come at the right time as more youth need to engage and participate in leadership and governance of this country because the future of the youth is in their hands and as much need to participate in shaping it. And final one here from Governor 254, leisure, recreation, and community service are important for the psychological and physical development of the youth. It contributes to their personal development by personal discipline, leadership, and team building skills. In continuation, um, this is from Governor 254, only youth-led and driven organizations interacting with national and county governments, NGOs, the international development community, and private sector can begin to genuinely address the challenge. Mm. All right. Trevor, how do we do this? Muluma has a very burning point. You know, 30 seconds. Point 30 seconds. Despite all this negativity, yeah. there are a lot of positive things that are also happening. Like, for example, 
you realize that we don't have very many young members of parliament in our parliament, current parliament. You're talking about 6.5% mm -hmm. of the larger representation. So as the young parliamentarians, we've started a program for them. It's a leadership sort of development program, and we've partnered with ICC, the church. Every young member of parliament has been assigned a life coach. You know, it's a new concept in Kenya. If you go to the U.S., President Obama had a life coach, a personal life coach. But that's for the existing ones in parliament. Yes, right about the, the current ones who are out there. The ones who are out there, attached to that program, we're starting a fellowship program, the equivalent of what uh, Mandela Fellowship and, and Yali fellowship. is all about. Okay. And this one is targeting first the MCS who aspire to join parliament, and then you have young aspiring leaders like Nerima who will also benefit from that. <laughs> and they will also have an opportunity to literally experience leadership at another level. Thank you. I think okay. we've gotten your point and thank you. Very important. We have to wrap up. Thank you for each of our guests okay. for joining us. Uh, one, one word, Mochimiwa. <laughs> for a young person to thrive in this country, you need one person who is senior, who can believe in you. Once you get that, whether in a political party, whether in government, whether it's your parent, whether it's your friend, that's it. That's it. For, so thank for, you. For, someone for, for the sake of Rift Valley, we had William Ruto who helped many young okay. people. Okay, now we're turning into a campaign. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a campaign. That's how we wrap it up. Is. Thank you yeah. so much for all your <laughs> feedback, whether via SMS on 2242 or Daybreak. Yeah. Web Wars, I believe, yeah, Web is, Web is up, next. up next. And to each of our panelists, we had Steve Ogola, an advocate of the High Court. Thank you for joining us. Narimo Wako, Executive Director, Siasa Place, Asante Sana. Anthony Buluma, Executive Director, Kenya Youth Parliamentarians Association, with a desire and an ambition for leadership <laughs> moving forward. Thank you as well. And Honorable Gideon Keter, nominated member of parliament who says you need someone to hold your hand yeah. does every young person have someone to hold their hand that's, the that's another question. discussion for another day we take that break <laughs> thank Web you Wars, for watching Daybreak. we'll see you in just a bit on the other side with Web Wars <laughs>